Hey, what's up CBC Kids? We are so excited that you tuned in to join us for Kids Church today. We are up here on the roof. Believe it or not, I'm kind of cold up here today, but hey, we are excited about what's about to happen. We have a quick activity we're gonna have you guys do in your house, on your couch, wherever you're at today. And then Miss Tori is gonna tell our Bible story. It is going to be really cool. Literally, it's pretty cool up here. But I wanted to remind you guys, uh, before Miss Tori talks about our big picture question that we're on right now, I wanna kinda take you back to what our big picture question was last month. Do you remember what that was? It was, is uh, Jesus fully God or fully human? Do you remember the answer to that? Go ahead and tell your parents what it was right now. Yes, Jesus is both. He is fully God and fully human. And because he's fully human, we need to remember that Jesus felt pain like we do. He felt emotion like we do. And Jesus was tempted like we were, or like we are now. Uh, and we're gonna learn that in Miss Tori's story today about a time when Jesus was tempted and how he overcame those temptations. Because we know Jesus, just because he was tempted like we were, we know he never sinned like we do. Jesus was totally perfect and flawless and never sinned in his life. So I wanna do a quick exercise with you, a quick activity, real quick. Parents, go ahead and sit down with your kids. And what I'm gonna do is I have four questions I'm gonna ask you that are true or false. And I want you to tell your parents if you think what I say is true or if I'm lying about it, okay? All right, our first question. The United States of America was founded in 1776. Is that true or false? Go ahead and give your answer right now. Yes, if you guessed true, you are one for one. That is correct. You did a great job with that. All right, question number two. The Bible has 65 books in it. Hmm, go ahead and give your answer right now. False, that is not true. Hey, open up your Bible, go to the table of contents and count them. There are 66 books in the Bible. If you guessed false, you are two for two. You're doing a great job. All right, the third question. True or false? Plants create their own food using sunlight. Plants create their own food using sunlight. I wish I could do that. Is that true or false? Go ahead and give your answer right now. That is true. Good job. You're three for three. You are killing it right now. All right, our last true or false. Saturn is the smallest planet in our solar system. Saturn is the smallest planet in our solar system. Hmm. If you don't remember, Saturn's the one with the big ring around it, right? All right, go ahead and give your answer real quick. True or false? False. The smallest planet in our solar system is actually Mercury. Hey, you did a good job. Uh, parents, if you want to keep practicing this with your kids later, come up with a list of good true or false questions and talk about these things some more. It's a great learning exercise, and we're going to see how it correlates to our story right now. See, sometimes it can be hard to know what's true. Okay, what's true and what's a lie? What's true and what's false? In our Bible story today, we're gonna learn about a time where Satan tried to trick Jesus so that Jesus would sin. Okay, but Jesus knew the truth. And we're about to see in just a second what Jesus did to overcome those lies and defeat Satan's lies. We're gonna check it out right now with Miss Tori. Hey kids, it's so good to have you back with us today. I really miss seeing you in Kids Church, but I'm hopefully we'll be again with you again soon. So I have a first question for today. It is about the big picture question from last week, if you watched our video. If you didn't, you can always go back on the church website and watch that video. The big picture question for today is, why did Jesus become human? It was also the big picture question last week. Do you remember the answer? If you do, tell your parents right now. Okay, the big picture question answer is, he came to obey his father's plan and to rescue sinners. He came to obey his father's plan and to rescue sinners. So that's the answer to today and last week's big picture question. I'm gonna ask you again next week. So maybe you should write it down and practice it every day. All right, so last week we talked about Jesus's baptism and Pastor Josh got a little wet. But this week we're gonna talk about something that happened right after Jesus was baptized. The Holy Spirit put in Jesus's heart that he should go out into the wilderness to pray but not only pray, but to do something else called fast. Have you ever heard of fast before? 
that's when you stop eating for a little while to just focus on praying and to focus on God. So Jesus actually fasted in this specific uh, place in the Bible. He fasted for 40 days. Can you even imagine not eating for 40 days? Think about that. How do you think you would feel after two days of not eating? How do you think you would feel after a month and a half of not eating? That is incredible. I can't even imagine how hungry you would be. So Jesus is out in the wilderness. He is starving, literally. He is so hungry. He has been praying constantly asking God for his will and his purpose and just getting really close to God, his father. And so um, Jesus did this for 40 days. Well, the devil sees him and the devil sees how tired he is. He hasn't had a bed. He's been out in the wilderness. He didn't take um, a blow up mattress with him or anything. And so he, the devil sees that he's tired. He sees that he's hungry and he sees that he's really weak. So the devil decides he's going to tempt Jesus. Have you ever been tempted to do something that you knew was wrong? Maybe one of your friends tempted you to steal a candy bar at the store or to sneak into the movies without paying or um, to steal some money out of your mom's purse maybe. Sometimes we are tempted maybe even to cheat on a test. Sometimes that's an easy thing to do when our teachers aren't paying attention. But in our heart, we know that it's wrong. And so that's what being tempted is, is when you're tried, someone tries or to get you to do something, or maybe in your heart, you really wanna do something even though you know that it's wrong. So Jesus, the devil decides to come and tempt Jesus. So he does, he has three different times that he tempts Jesus. And the first one is this, he is so hungry. So the devil comes and says, hey Jesus, if you're really God, you need to prove it and turn these stones, he found a, some stones that were laying around on the ground. He said, turn these stones into bread and then eat them. If you're really God, that will be so easy for you. And so Jesus looks at him and instead of just saying you know, something mean or something that comes off the top of his head, even though he is Satan, he decides to quote the Bible. And he says, the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of God's mouth. So in other words, man shouldn't live just by food. You're supposed to live by God's word and I'm obeying God's word. So Satan goes away for a little while. He didn't win against him that time. So next, Satan takes Jesus up to the top of the temple. And he says, if you are really God's son, prove it. Jump off of this temple and trust God to protect you. I'm on the top of this building right now, on top of this church, and I do not want to jump off of this building. But he says, jump off of the temple roof and God will protect you. He'll send angels to catch you. You'll be safe. And so Jesus, again, he doesn't get mad. He uses the Bible to refute and to put Satan away and to tell Satan to go away. So he says, um, God's word also says, do not tempt the Lord your God. So Satan just goes right away after that because that was very plain and very clear. You're not supposed to test and um, tempt Jesus. So finally, he takes Jesus to the top of a mountain. And this time he doesn't tell him to jump off. He shows him the entire land, how beautiful it is. He shows him all of the beautiful buildings that have been built, all of the homes, and he shows him everything. And he says to Jesus, if you will bow down and worship me, I will give you all of this. It will all be yours. You'll have all the riches. You'll have all the power. You'll have all the glory. And he tells Jesus to bow down and worship him. Well, this time Jesus is done. And he says, get thee behind me, Satan. Get out of here. And then he uses the Bible again for a third time. That's why it's so important that we memorize our Bible. He, said, he uses the Bible a third time and he says, I am not going to do that. You are only supposed to bow down and worship God. He says, the Bible said, you only worship the Lord your God. So at that point, he told Satan to go away and Satan went away from him. And then the Bible says something really neat. After those three times, the angels came down 
and ministered to Jesus. They took care of him. They probably fed him and comforted him and helped him rest. I thought that was so special that the angels came after he was tempted so many times to minister to him and to be a help and a blessing to him. So Jesus trusted God and he never sinned. Then he died on the cross for our sins to take our sins away so that we can face temptation and not sin. That's exactly what Jesus did. He did that so that we can look at him and say, he went through the same exact thing that I went through. Jesus knows what it feels like to really want to do something wrong, but he didn't do it. And boys and girls, we have that exact same ability. It's really hard to not do something wrong when our friends are doing it or when we're all alone, but you can do it and Jesus proved that you can do it. I believe in you. I am so happy to tell you all this story today and I hope you enjoyed it. Ooh, it was cold out there, guys. I'm all bundled up trying to warm up now. Hey, we wanted to go ahead and remind you, kids, do not go out on your roof. Not only is it gonna be cold up there, it's dangerous. We'd like for you not to get on your roof. Okay. Uh, anyway, we had a great time with Kids Church today. The lesson was awesome. You had that cool activity to do. And we wanted to send you off with one last challenge. Kids, go ahead and get in your parents' ears and say, hey, I want to go for a walk today. Okay, definitely practice your social distancing and everything like that. But get outside, get some exercise, and go for a walk. And here's what I want you guys to do. Go find a cool-looking rock on your walk. Okay, take it back to your house. Put it in your room somewhere you can keep it and use it as a reminder when you're tempted to sin to remind yourself, hey, just like Jesus said no to the temptations, hey, I can say no to those temptations too. Use it as a reminder anytime you're tempted to, to sin or to do something wrong, that hey, I don't need to do this and I can overcome this temptation right now. So, hey, we had a great time with Kids Church today. We're excited to see you again next week. Stay warm and stay safe, guys. Bye.